How you doing? This is your host, Locke. Before we get started, I want to take a minute to tell you about a new podcast called Military True Crime Addict. It's a podcast about crime relating to actual life events of military personnel, veterans, and family members. Their stories are well-researched, and they touch on topics ranging from assault, abuse of power, hazing, all the way up to serial killers with military backgrounds. I just started listening to Military True Crime Addict, and I ended up binging a bunch of episodes. I actually just finished their newest episode, The One Eagle Scout, and a lot of these stories, they haven't even been covered in the media or by news outlets, so it's kind of a way to get awareness out of some of these stories. And you don't need to know anything about the military to enjoy the podcast. So go download their episodes on any of the podcast players and go follow them on Facebook at Military True Crime Addict or you can go to their website, MilitaryTrueCrimeAddict.com. It's Locke, and this is the podcast where we drink, smoke, and bullshit about the life of a historic criminal. Now we're talking outlaws and gangsters. We're not going to cover too many serial killers. That's just a little bit dark for me, and this ain't no true crime podcast. Honestly, you can't call this a history podcast because I'm no historian. I'm just a history fan that does some research and bullshits about it with his friends. So speaking of my friends, let me introduce you to my co-host. First with us, we got Tank. Hey guys, how's it going today? And also with us, I got Dan. What up, what up? I'm going to need a little more charisma on these intros, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah I guess Spice it up. Dan's here. Yeah. Oh, that was uh, my bad. I, I need like a mon- it. I need monster. Well, we got grown-up monsters yeah. in a cup. Or that, that one TV show that just starts off with that Who song, the Who Are You, and he's like, ah! <laughs> oh, the CSI? Yeah. No, it starts whenever they go to break, like when they see the crime and to be like a decapitated head. Oh, this guy's Jerry something. He's a banker. Well, it's nothing to lose your head over. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> dun, dun, dun. That is that uh, oh, David shit. Caruso. David Caruso. Yeah. You know? Weird face, ginger haired <laughs> fella. Oddly creepy though. He's creepy even though he's like a good guy. You know what I mean? See, that's why he's such a good cop because he's like, I gotta prove this wasn't me. I'm almost Dexter. If yeah. I wasn't playing this guy, I would be Dexter. Would be my other role. <laughs> he's Dexter. Dexter uh, caught leukemia. <laughs> In a different direction. We're coming hard at David Caruso. (laughs) Fuck him. David Caruso, he's like, he's the the Joaquin Phoenix Joker of fucking Dexter's. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody's got their own take of it on it, you know? Man. See, fuck the intros. All we need is a little David Caruso talking. We're we're in it again. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, today we got for a drink. We got Tank on. He's always a bit of a beer aficionado, so we've been trying to come up with some drink concoctions. So my wife's always whipping up some drinks. So I got us a uh, old fashioned. You guys uh, try it. I like it. Like you said, I've been trying to branch out on the, I guess, hard liquor drinks. You could say mixed drinks, and uh, this one didn't disappoint. But she's a professional man, so she knows how to make them, and it's tasty. I like it. It's nice, hazy. Got a little potpourri in the bottom floating around. <laughs> Gives it that floral flavor. I'm not exactly sure what's in it, but it's see that's delicious. the shit. Before you get into what's in it, that's the one thing. Like in drinks, I I don't know nothing about mixed drinks really, and I definitely don't know anything about the gingers and the extra like spices and shit. Even when I get mixed drinks, it's usually a couple things mixed in one. I usually don't get shit that's got like seasoning to it. Well, the seasoning would be fruit, but it's muddled. It's and I say that like good, like it yeah. tastes good. Like that's not a put down. Like that's just I don't get into that too much i know nothing about it it feels like a drink that you'd want to drink in the winter time you know it's got a warm taste to it so it sort of warms up your soul a little yeah. bit you know what i'm saying the old-fashioned is a drink that if you were to go to a bar so we talked earlier about going to beer snob breweries where you get your room temperature beer and shit <laughs> you know? yep yep like if you were to go to the whiskey bar equivalent of that they would probably make like a good old-fashioned so it's like an old school drink that's made like a big comeback as whiskeys have become popular again. Okay. But it's all the potpourri at the bottom. It's muddled cherries and the rind of an orange or whatever. You don't actually use the orange. You just use the uh, the peel or whatever. Muddled? That's just fancy <laughs> talk for stick whipped. <laughs> well, and I mean, as for somebody who doesn't drink a lot of drinks, I mean, when you get a mixed drink, I mean, there's I guess there's two ways to do it. You can have a drink where you're you're surprised that you can't taste the alcohol, or you could feature 
the alcohol that you're drinking and just try to accent the the drink with some flavors and i think she did a great job at doing the second part because you can really taste the whiskey and it's good whiskey and the muddled fruit man just it's subtle you don't it's not in the forefront but you can still tell it's there so man this is a good uh drink man we got into uh the muddle puddle real quick but uh what whiskey's in here what what else is in here what's uh bullet bourbon word i know you're a big bourbon drinker like bourbon's my go-to whiskey i I mean i'll drink any of them really but my preference is bourbon typically it's got a little sweet like i'm a sweet guy myself so bourbon's got just a little bit more sweetness to than just normal whiskey to me I would say that Bullet Bourbon is probably my new go-to bourbon. A lot of people like, uh, I don't think I've had it myself, but the Bullet Rye, I've heard a lot of people like that. We almost got that today. We were looking at that, we were picking between the two, but I know I like the bourbon. Yeah. And I already got a like a rye on deck in case I needed one in a pinch. Yeah, <laughs> I like bullet... how you said that, in a pinch. <laughs> I mean, bullets in... <laughs> in, in, a, in a rye emergency. <laughs> hey, know? man, believe you me, I when got bruised for when brew When you know emergency. you just need a little bit of it in case, you need yeah. that. Yep. It's better to have it see, and not need it. See, folks, yeah. I mean, we love the drinks. I mean, we're not like <laughs> we sh- shitty drinks. alcoholics or anything, but we take our drinks seriously, <laughs> right. folks. Say hello to the bad guy. We like our drinks. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, bullet whiskey. That's a uh, that's just a good standard. Yeah. Before we get started, as always, we got to thank Six Post Swaino for letting us use his music in the intro, and Cancer for letting us use his song "Blood" in the mid roll. He also did our artwork, which you can see at his Instagram, at Eyes Bleed Defiance. And then you can follow us at Bad Guy Podcast on Instagram and on TikTok, and then BadGuyPodcast.com. You can get all the links, the emails, everything through there. I think that's all, that's it, right? I got it all. Yeah. I, I think so oh, okay anything else so, sounds like most of it i don't know all right we'll get started and the bad guy we're covering today is william michael cusick this ain't negotiation time this is scarface final scene fucking bazookas under each arm say hello to my little friend it's always good when they have uh three names either a serial killer or an improv guy i'm actually oddly enough i'm a fan of improv it's got to be good though <laughs> I don't know why that's oddly. And yeah. of course anything you enjoy if it's good. <laughs> but no, I mean improv gets a bad name cuz there is so many bad ones. Even me who am kind of like a stand-up nerd, not a snob, but like I really dig stand up. I have ever since I was a little kid and shit. But uh stand-up people tend to hate improv shit and I've never really understood it cuz they don't understand like writing. I mean the uh it's Tom Middleditch and uh, I can't think of his name. Jason Schwartz, maybe is his name. He does the voice of Sonic, but they got a three-part improv special on Netflix. That's real good. I don't know. I say I like improv, but I feel like I really just like whose line is it anyways. <laughs> and like, uh, <laughs> you like the white bread of improv? like And Robert Riggle. I like those, so I think I like improv. You like the Big Bang Theory of improv? <laughs> i'm sorry i'm easily distracted i'm having a really good time with my beer over it is, here yeah hey, well, you know it's a beautiful beer i made it nitros look so cool when you yeah. pour them man well come on focus up this is a good improv chat we're having yeah. all right william michael cusick aka michael duffy or mm. aka mickey duffy word so he was born william michael cusick in 1888 in gray's ferry philadelphia in pennsylvania to polish immigrants so he became involved in petty theft and other misdemeanors during his youth and changed his name to Mickey Duffy to fit in with local Irish gangs. Every time. No one <laughs> We gotta talk about this. This well, is crazy. You know, back then, man, there was a where you were from was a big deal and uh I mean I, if you wanna adapt, you wanna make money. Right. It's so weird until we did this podcast, I just never realized how many times Italians had to act Irish to fit in. Like who it's Irish. Why would that even be a step up? <laughs> And I don't mean that as a dig on the Irish, but back in the day, Irish people were looked down upon. They were second-class citizens just like Italian people. They so just got here one generation first, is all yeah. it was. Because when the Irish came off the boat, the British and the native people here couldn't stand them because they didn't like Catholics and stuff like that. So well, they weren't a fan of the Irish. Well, just a couple... I guess it would have to be like the next generation, because just a couple decades later in the 1920s, it's the 
Italian mob and all the Italians that are running shit. It makes yeah. sense. Like, Irish people are looked down upon, like aren't allowed to join their gangs and shit. Have you seen any of the Fargo season four? Yeah, I have, I'm a couple episodes behind. But the very first episode, they kind of cover that. They yeah. just go through the rundown of the early 1900s, the same neighborhood, same gang, same everything. And then it just goes from the Jews to the Irish to the mobsters, and then the black dudes step in. It's just the natural progression of people in that same situation. Yeah. But the like the gang's not changing, just the, the situation, like who's in it is changing. But at least this is our first guy... This is the first time that it's a Polish guy. It's not. It's always been an Italian dude. Oh, yeah, you know what? I just got locked in, changed to be Irish. I was assuming he was Italian. At least it was across the board. It didn't matter what race you were. <laughs> you, you had to make sure, you had to pretend you like you were Irish. Yeah, you had to fake it till you made it. The other white meat. And he's the first guy. <laughs> he was the first guy not doing it to box, just to be a gangster. Right on. Just so he doesn't get picked on. No, I'm Irish. I swear to God. So during his teenage years, he moved into more serious crimes, including armed robbery and hijacking. Yeah, those are pretty serious. Yep. That's a step up the ladder. Yep. In May 1919, he's arrested and convicted for assault and battery with intent to kill. He was sent to Eastern State Penitentiary, where he did almost three years. So I never heard of Eastern State Penitentiary, and at first I'm always covering, you know, Florence Supermax and Leavenworth and USP Atlanta. I was like, oh, the nice classics. A, a quaint, this is gonna a nice, quaint little state prison, but it's never a quaint little state prison, so this is a place that's now a historic site. Oh, you little cute little state prison. <laughs> oh, man, that looks fucking... Yeah, it looks like a dungeon. Dude, it does. It looks super gothic. Yeah, that's wild, that entrance right there. I mean, imagine going, <laughs> like you, you, you're going in there. I don't know whose entrance that is, but it looks like a fucking castle. Yeah, Jesus. It, look, it really looks like a fucking castle. I mean, you can expect that people were not preparing for great treatment when they walked through that goddamn door. Yeah, it looks like a place that as you were being put into, you'd be like, fuck. Oh, fuck. And how old yeah. you, do we know how old he was when he got put in? So he got put in in 1919. He was born in 88. So he would have been okay. 41? No, 31? Yep. Yeah, 31. Okay. So he'd be 31. 31 when he goes in. All right, all right. So a little less and intimidating, probably. And it was an probably. attempt to kill, but what? Assault and attempt to murder? Assault and battery with assault and intent battery. to kill. Word. All right, so he's done. Because something. assault's technically not hurting someone or putting your hands on them. No, I think assault is, I think battery is in or something. No, shit. battery's when you get to touch somebody. Can you assault someone oh. without putting your hands on them? You can, like, intimidate the fuck out of someone, you know? Yep. Word. So... After his release, he got released in uh, 20, 1922. Prohibition was in full swing, and he married a lady named Edith Craig. He immediately jumped back into the criminal world, and he put together a gang of uh, prison associates and old rivals that he'd had growing up. Okay. Just criminal 101. <laughs> so prison. he mends bridges. All right. Yeah. He's a community leader. He reaches across the aisle. Yeah. And you know what? How about we build us a gang? He'll work with ex-cons, giving them a place to be. These are the boys from the castle. We'll get it done. Uh, Dungeon boys. <laughs> so he quickly becomes one of the most dominant bootleggers in the Delaware Valley. And he acquired breweries in Philadelphia, Camden, and South Jersey. Damn, so he wasn't fucking around. I mean, it never ceases to amaze me the amount of time shit go. Yep, so they did a crime. They went to jail for a little bit. Got out, started a gang, and just started running shit. Like, Damn. <laughs> It legitimately is criminal college. trade school. Okay, yeah. college. Yeah. Either way, you know, you go there and you sharpen up your trade, which way, one way or the other. You got like the tryouts. <laughs> you like <laughs> you roll up in prison and you're and you're sitting in your cell, or you you know you go out for meals and shit, and you're just kind of scouting all the other prisoners <laughs> and who, you, who you and your crew is gonna be after you get out. Doing little interviews. So where do you see yourself in four to six years? <laughs> yep. What are your long term goals? You're you're gonna try to be an accountant. I don't think you're the person we're looking for. Thank you for your time. By 1924, he was using his illegal earnings. He acquired a bunch of legal businesses. He bought a couple upscale clubs called the Perkin, and then another one called Club Caddix. Giant sw swinging Philadelphia clubs and shit. Word. He also moved into the numbers business, which rapidly became a cash cow, because that's what the number business does. I know that now. <laughs> Did, didn't know so much, but now I know. You start running the numbers, like, oh, so you're so you're paid. Turns out it's quite lucrative to do crime. Mm -hmm. People that tell you crime doesn't pay, they're lying. Tell them they don't know about the numbers. Like, well, well the policy game says different. Yeah. Well, it doesn't pay good, but once you go to jail once and mm -hmm. get out, that's when it really starts coming in. 
Well, I mean, you got to go to college. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think this dude who went to prison got out and started running shit begs to differ. But I so, mean, yeah, if if you're a bootlegger to begin with, opening some clubs is probably the best way to handle your shit. So he ran his numbers operation, his legitimate business, and his bootlegging. He ran it all out of the Ritz Carlton. Of course. Oh man, just ran it out. See, that's all low key shit. and just shit. Ran it out of the little <laughs> pet house. What I think is, uh, you look at like he was in that dungeon. Now he found himself a fat ass fucking penthouse to run out of. One of the funny things is when I'm doing the research, it says that he set up shop in the old Ritz Carlton building. But then when I go back to find pictures, I see a bunch of pictures that are like the new Ritz Carlton building. <laughs> right. And uh, I mean, for the time, that was a nice building. I mean, just imagine the difference, though, fellas. Imagine that rush, knowing that you went to the fucking castle dungeon prison and now you're running your op out of the Ritz Carlton. I bet he felt like he was on top of the world. Well, I mean, to get into the architecture of it real quick, like, I like this old Gothic-style architecture. Experience. Like, here in Detroit, we're known for that and shit. Like, mm-hmm. I don't really think about it, but I hear, like, people from other parts of the country come here to check out the buildings, like, if they're into that sort of shit. And this, all these old-style buildings, this one, too, has, like, the old stone arches and really, like, like at least the first couple's floors, that is. Well, in most of these places in Detroit, like if you try to get these places downtown, you can update everything on the inside, but they're supposed to keep like the facades oh, like yeah. that. Okay. Like they're trying to keep that. Well, any historical that building or whatever, there's a lot of like regulations and all that sort of shit. Right. You can't go Benny Binion and just run some lights <laughs> up that <laughs> bitch and <laughs> put a big fucking <laughs> sign on it. And shit. And hey. You know what? I'll do what I want. When you rock a buffalo skin jacket like old Benny, yeah. you do whatever the fuck you, you want to do. Tossing stakes around <laughs> like it's nobody's business. On uh, February 25th, 1927, while leaving Club Caddick, Duffy was shot three times, which he ended up surviving. The Damn. club doorman, Earl Brown, also was wounded, but his bodyguard, John Bricker, was killed. This shooting was the first instance of a, of a Thompson submachine gun being used in a Philadelphia underworld. Damn, so before that, they only heard of a Thompson fire? That, that was like a myth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that it finally... One day, guys. And uh, it, and that's great, that because I think we've covered another first of the Tommy on... Uh on the show before and that's that's awesome that you said that because like back then they were keeping track of that like well they still haven't used to tommy in philadelphia boys well the uh the purple gang murder at the miller flores massacre yeah that was first of the first time it was used or the first yeah. around here that was the first time we got in detroit and then what about the uh the white owl the famous massacre the valentine's day no chicago is way ahead of the curve so yeah. i know this wouldn't surprise you because if you we're all from like well i guess our listeners aren't but in america our guns come from the midwest out yeah so oh, okay. like the egan's rat from the like, heart of america right <laughs> so the egan's rat game kansas city chicago they were early adapters to the submachine gun and shit so they're busting them out chicago they had that shit in 1924 uh yeah. kansas city man those motherfuckers like the like the mayor <laughs> like the ward like the guys that run the gang were like the politicians and they were just that's, out there that's where together. they test the guns <laughs> that's where they yeah. figure out how it goes yeah but so then they worked their way east you know man. so then like detroit we had frankie l which was the first time in new york and that was in 1924 so right I about believe. the no, same no, 25 time. 1925 so right about the same time is it what year yeah. we this was 27. 27 detroit right. was 27 so kansas city and chicago were first New York, that was uh, Chicago guys, though, that they brought yeah. in. Well, they get streamlined. Okay. There's yeah. like a direct gun flight to right. New York. <laughs> Detroit and Philadelphia just fly over states with the gun <laughs> trafficking. But yeah, so we've covered three different first uses of the Tommy gun. So now you think, like, after that killing happened, David Caruso popped up on the scene was like, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> the Tommy gun finally made it here. <laughs> See, it all comes back to David Caruso, man. Like, it was only a matter of Tom. Oh, yeah! <laughs> After that, Duffy was known to be violent and aggressive in his expansion. Don't blame him there. He went to war with Max Castle, who was kind of sided with Waxy Gordon. Ooh, and good name! Max Hassel? Max. Oh, I thought you said Max Castle. No, it was Max Hassel. Oh. And we- I might have. Either way, Max See, Hassel. I, I mean, mean when you flow dude, it Max straight Hassel, through. That's Max Hassel. <laughs> it's one word. It's just Max it's Hassel. It's not minimum Hassel. 
Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> as much hassle as you can get. More hassle than you can shake a stick at. We can do this two ways. The easy way, or we can make it a hassle. Max hassle. And, the, and, and it's funny because I thought he said good name about Waxy. Because, I mean, I mean oh, either yeah, way, I mean, they're both still good one. names. But Waxy good Gordon, names Waxy. all over the fucking place. Now we're getting to the good stuff. One of my stuff. other favorite names, because Maxi. Well, Maxie, not. <laughs> That's not as cool as Max. No, definitely With, not. Like, my name is Max, and people call me Maxie. I am pissed. Oh, there's going to be a fucking hassle. <laughs> call me Maxie. Oh, we're hassling all over this motherfucker. But what about Maxie? What were you even saying? Um, not Maxie, Waxie. It, yeah. When you said waxy, you remembered me. You remembered me. <laughs> I will remember you. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's when, a... you, when you said waxy, you reminded me of my other favorite bad guy. And it was in a TV show, Chalky. So for, for whatever reason, waxy and Chalky uh, related to me. And when you said that's a good name, I thought that's what you meant. One of my favorite things is uh, his name's Chalky White in Boardwalk Empire. But at one point, the cop's like, yeah, it's that... Uh, one of a milky yeah <laughs> yeah milky yeah he tried to like come on man you ain't punk and chalky by calling him milky don't try so basically he was beefing with max hassel and waxy gordon because he was expanding into their territories yeah. um eventually it was resolved by duffy forcing max hassel to hand over one of his breweries and some of the new jersey territory so it wasn't a hassle to get that from him we could stay at war or you could give me some of the shit I'm like all right you know what just take it that's that's how it goes in uh in bad guy lore though you know that's how some wars are are solved and other ones they go to the death. Do you want to be smart and keep some of your shit or do you want to give it all to me? Yeah, Sun Tzu. Yeah. You sometimes you got to make that decision. Yes, sir. In 1930, Mickey Duffy was making so much money he built a mansion in the style of a Mediterranean villa for him and his wife. Nice. In the Pennsylvania suburbs. Say he likes the architecture. <laughs> Man, what was his, uh, I wonder what his, uh, cover deal was for all this money he was making and shit. Well, that's so crazy. He had to be a Mediterranean, like, wow, this is almost Italian. No, 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 I'm Irish. I'm, my name's Mickey Duffy. I'm Irish. Don't call me. Or wait, I keep on thinking he's Italian when he's Polish. He is Polish. I, God damn it, I did it again. Poor Mickey Duffy. His name's Kusick. He can't be Polish. He tries to be Irish. We keep thinking he's Italian. Like, <laughs> this guy can't win. So in September 19, 1930, a raid on one of his breweries, a federal agent named John Finello got shot and killed. Boom, 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 boom. You know how it goes <laughs> after this. You know how it goes after this, man. You can't mess with the feds. You can't. You definitely can't mess with the cops. You can't mess with the feds for damn sure. They true first blood. Is that more David Caruso? <laughs> <laughs> shot Rambo. Okay. Only right. not that good. <laughs> It was Rambo, you know. It was a Rambo quote well, look, said uh, by David Caruso. Yeah. <laughs> they drew a... first blood. Oh, and, yeah! And it's been so long. Because that's more recent than first blood. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so this led to a crackdown to all his operations by federal and local authorities. And then that led to animosity between him and his partners and associates. Because they're like, well, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, you know, way to you be. You brought the fuzz, bro. Yeah. Way to be, Duffy. There's, <laughs> there's always that one asshole that gets out of line and ruins it for everyone. He's not even, he's not even really Irish, man. <laughs> All right, what, and now he's messing with the feds. What the shit? So, in August 31st, 1931, while staying at the Ambassador Hotel in Atlantic City, Duffy was gunned down. So the murder was never resolved, but it was thought to be committed by disgruntled members of his organization in the takeover. They, I like to think it's almost like the mob did it that as a killing. Like, hey, cops, stop cracking down on us. See, we took care of him. He's yeah. good. We got yeah. it. Well, that probably, we, we yeah, that probably was the stipulations, right? Yeah. You know, like, hey, wait, man, somebody stepped out of line here. Uh, you guys been paying us, and the deal was your your guy doesn't kill us, and we don't kill them, and, you know, eye for eye kind of shit. But see, it's also one of those things that in history, I mean, maybe certain situations, if you were a real historian and you really, like, got into the actual documents and, like, fucking looked at everything, you could get more accurate shit. But in history, there's so much little things that you don't know. Like his gang, there could have been so much little infighting that was going on, little right. simple shit that doesn't make it to the actual account. But there could have been a lot of shit, like, infighting going on that you don't really hear about. 
Well, and most of Prohibition, that's how it went on. So most of what we think of gangland and Prohibition is actually the early 30s because Prohibition was just Wild West and everybody was kind against everybody. And then once you get into the 30s is kind of when everything really shook itself out. Okay. So the 20s was like tryouts. You know, some people Mm. flamed out real quick. Some people slowly built up. And in the early 30s is when it all kind of settled into what it is today. Like late in Prohibition, you know, early Depression. Yeah, so I mean, I can see it because he was sort of dude that started expanding more. He got bigger and bigger. He fucking stepped on Max Hassel's toes and walked away <laughs> with it with more shit. Yeah. He was probably uh getting cocky, and then he fucking shoots a cop, and people are like, "All right, this motherfucker what? just yeah. getting too big for his we britches." We're cool with you smacking yeah. Hassel down, but not the feds, bro. Well, you can only smack so many Hassels <laughs> <laughs> until at some point somebody's like, "Hey." You're, at one point, you're going to smack the wrong hassle, mm-hmm. and they're going to fucking smack back. You can get back hassled. <laughs> a mafia member named Frankie Carbo was initially charged with the murder, but was never prosecuted. He had an alibi or his lack of evidence. So the next year after his murder, there was wars until December with a lot of his associates. Uh, two people that were possibly thought of as suspects in his murder were both killed. And kind of, it was his gang underneath him kind of went to war and settled itself in till around December of 1931. Yeah, the Alpha got killed and the rest of the pack deciding who's the next Alpha. It basically got handed over to the Philadelphia mob. It was kind of <laughs> when they so, started. This was so great. Like, yeah, we'll take him out, then one of us will leave. What I like, no, you just turn weak and then your competitor moves in and takes all your shit because yeah. you decided to kill the boss. Yeah, the, even though he was a crazy asshole, that's what kept out the fucking, the mob mob. And, uh, you know, across the board, most of these cities, you know, Detroit is an example. You know, there was a lot of Jewish gangs, Irish gangs that were wild and they didn't fuck with, but it was just went war by attrition. Yeah. You know, they just kind of played their role and waited and eventually as they fizzed out, like, oh damn, now you killed Mickey Duffy, the Polish Irishman, and now you're killing each other. And guess what? We didn't kill any, we didn't lose anybody. Yeah, we, we just, just slide in the first place. Yep. Oh, I'm back. You guys mm-hmm. thought I was going, but I'm back again. Right here, what we have is a situation where a pet got real angry, took out his alpha, and now that big bad wolf, he's out of there. All these other wolves are fighting. They're limping around. They're licking their own wounds. They're biting each other. And I just went into Beatles for no reason. I sort of <laughs> lost this accent. But, uh, <laughs> but it is great because I do this all the time, like, it is almost animalistic sometimes when you get into these power hungry fucking situations where that is straight up it where you see it all the time. Like yeah. the pet got weak in fighting and the young just slowly mine just fucking yeah. snatches it. Well, we are just animals. I mean, we're smarter animals. We have thumbs. But at the end of the day, we do the same things that animals do mm-hmm. yeah. historically. That fucking chimp brain. All right. Well, that's the story of Mickey Duffy. So say good night to the bad guy. Go on. The last time you're going to see a bad guy like this again, let me tell you. A character based on Mickey Duffy was in Boardwalk Empire, uh, Mickey Doyle. Oh, that. See, when you were saying that, and especially when we brought up Chalky, I was thinking Mickey Doyle, but he, as the story went on, like, he didn't feel like Mickey Doyle at all. And then I realized. Man, it's just the name Mickey. There can be plenty. There's Mickey Mantle, just because his name's Mickey and his name's Mickey. It was a popular Mickey. name. Yeah. I remember him from Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. He, know, he, he was funny. Like a, I liked yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, he, he had like a weird voice. He, 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 he. <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. More like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that hat. <laughs> Which is kind of the That's traditional old school hat. gangster if you watch like the old fucking. Yeah. What do you, mm-hmm. you know, see? Yeah. You know, it's crazy. And I, you'd have to fact check this if it's just like one of those sort of urban legend sort of things but um that the way that they talk like that actually became after the caricature of the 1920s gangster happened like all the actors and stuff in movies be like yeah see and then because they started acting like that (laughs) that made the gangsters start acting like that like it was a weird cart before the horse thing like right People, they, like, when you watch the movies, they, like, no, the Hollywood, like, created that, and then they just started doing it. That kind of holds true still with Godfather. That was made in its own vein. They watched it, and then they thought, okay, well, this is how gangsters act, and then they reproduced it. So it was, like, art 
imitating life that's imitating art. It's like Inception, bro. Fucking mind is melting. So here's a picture of the real Mickey Duffy. Wow. Oh, All right, yeah. those both those don't even look the same because the first one, he looks like Sloth from the Goonies, and then on the other one, he looks like David Caruso. <laughs> Damn man, and and the the one on the right with the hat. I mean, you can see why if they based him off of this fella in real life on the show that they they got they nailed the hat. But um, well, that's the easiest part. Man, that, <laughs> yeah, no, that really has nothing to do with him. The picture on the right, what I was you getting, could cast any hat. I was definitely <laughs> cast any. I was definitely slow on the point. <laughs> the one on the right, it seems like there's an actor who they could have got that would have almost been identical to this dude, and I'm failing to come up with the name, so I guess it's shitty for me to bring it up. Ah, man, who am I thinking of? I like that they put the numbers on his shoulder in that. Yeah. In that okay, picture. yep. But, uh, I mean, for the listeners, this would be annoying because it's all picture stuff, but once it's on an Instagram, you can see it. But that picture on the left, I don't know what that is, but that, that can't be the same dude. That's the same dude. It's like a weird funhouse mirror image of him. Yeah, you're right. His nose don't even look the same. Yeah, nothing like the shape of his head. Like, it's distorted, like Should stretched be, out, like nothing. Some kind of painting the same. Hey, look, if you want, it does, I think it, it does look like a painting. Yeah. So maybe it's a painting. But maybe it's way. a painting. And if it is, good. I well, mean, look, it's close. Anybody that wants to Google their better Mickey Duffy pictures oh, and email them to me is more than welcome to. <laughs> you know? uh, so you email us, say hello to the bad guy podcast at gmail.com. Send them in, man. I'll take a look and fucking post them on Instagram. But in the meantime, these are my Mickey Duffy pictures. I got a bunch of Mickey Doyle pictures. I got as many as you could possibly want. We we'll just pretend that's him. So we're going to do the DEFCON scale. Standard DEFCON scale is 5 to 1. On the Bad Guy Podcast, there's no good guys. So 5s would be Lee Murray, who's your coke dealing, bank robbing, kidnapper. And then 1 would be the Purple Gang, who's got multiple gang wars, multiple massacres, and they're killing people on the street. So on a scale of Lee Murray to the Purple Gang, where would you rate Michael Duffy? Man. Well, I'd say a 4. Like, he was almost your standard uh, mob guy, which I usually give a 3, but he didn't have too many bodies. He... I'm sure, like I said earlier, like in the history, I'm sure he did like break a few legs and he was pretty violent and shit. He went to mm-hmm. jail for assault and battery and attempted murder and shit. But the only body that I remember really getting is uh the cop. And that's one fuck up, but that's also a cop fucking up his operation. We almost, like you said, there's no good guys on yeah. here and we almost have that whole, you know, Shoot if it's the real. lying of duty. So, I mean, that's his only body. And that's why I would give him before because... A forgivable kill, and I'll still give you a four. What do you think? Well, I mean, I'm I'm agreeing with the four. I almost wanted to give him a five, but we got to remember the Phillies first Tommy, and you know, leading shit, running shit. You, we know he got away with a little bit more than we probably know about being a leader. We we mentioned that before on the show is that we've got some history from these these fellas and these ladies, but we don't have all their history. And as a leader, you know that he probably overseen a lot more than we're getting into. So, anyways, uh, four I agree with because Philly's first Tommy and then the Fed uh, right at the end before he got taken care of, my, you know, himself. But, yeah, I think four. I agree with a four. Yeah, I could say a four. Like, based on the information, we don't have much confirmed violence. Mm-hmm. But that's the nature of some of these old school guys. And just because, I mean, Mick, Mickey Doyle kind of was based on him he ran philly at a time so it's interesting but then you can't say well we're not gonna tell that story because it's not a bunch of bodies we said we're not a true crime podcast so you shouldn't have to kill a bunch of people but you do assume lost in translation there's some shit that happens this is what i'm saying the scale's almost a little iffy especially like to reiterate what you just said there's probably some violence we didn't hear of we go off the documented and documented you don't have that body count to give them anything real higher all right so we're going to go with a DEFCON 4. They're moving in. I say we go to DEFCON 4. All right, uh, before we go, you guys got anything? No. No, man. I mean, I guess just be who you are. You don't got to change your shit to Irish, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, just I'm, be you, William yeah, Gussick. I got, I got Irish in me. I mean, hey, there's no shame in, 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 any, in any of what you got in you, but I'm just kidding. No, thanks, man. Uh, I always enjoy having coming on and i enjoy the drinks and uh you know everybody take care of each other and have a good night i have nothing after those inspirational <laughs> messages brought to you by tank thank you Just, you know keep it sexy that's y'all. how you know yeah yeah got a couple in me
All right. So this is Say Hello to the Bad Guy. Thanks for coming and thanks for listening.